This lens is from the USSR, meaning that it is old. But I don't use this 1970s lens on a film camera, I use it on my incredibly high-tech modern Sony mirrorless camera. But why is that? Well, because the high-quality metal exterior build and the interior textured glass elements are simply something you can't find on modern lenses. So here's why you should consider purchasing one of these little lenses. So what do I like about this lens? Well, first of all, it is cheap. There are many different types of this lens that were made, and some of them are better than others in terms of optical quality, but many of them you can find for around $60, but for some of the more rare ones like this one, they cost over $100, but regardless, that means they are very cheap. This lens is also very easy to adapt to full frame modern sensors and a simple $10 adapter will work fine. And even with that, the focus to infinity still works great when adapted, so it's relatively easy to nail focus. And the lens has a minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters, which isn't super close, but it's close enough for most situations. There's also something with the optical contrast levels on this lens and flaring that just make it feel vintage and help to give your digital footage a more filmic appearance. It's hard to exactly describe what causes this, but it's more of a feeling you get from the shots. And finally, at 58mm in f2, you are able to get pretty nice compression and a shallow depth of field with unique swirly bokeh on the edges. And now with those things in mind, here is a short sequence I shot on this lens. Now with all that positive, here are a few things that I don't like or things that you should just keep in mind and be aware of. First of all, this lens is very soft on the edges when wide open. I know it's a very stylistic look and creative, but it can be a bit too much for me even when it's fully open and just really soft around the edges, so keep that in mind. This lens also has a pretty green tint to it and I found I needed to add plus 15 to 20 magenta and davinci to balance out the green tint. Also the aperture ring is stopless and quite loose at least on my lens and so it can be hard to keep a constant aperture or choose the exact aperture that you want. And at 58mm, especially on a small and lightweight lens like this, it can introduce a lot of jitter when shooting handheld, so it can be very hard at 24 frames per second to keep a steady image when handheld without all those micro jitters. But regardless, at the price point, this little Soviet lens is definitely stylistic and very fun to mess around with on certain film projects. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like the music in this video, click the link below and get two months free on Artlist's annual subscription plan. But thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.